seven tenths of a second. No, that's. I should think Werner von Braun would be ashamed of himself. Seven tenths of a second late, getting this great beast and all that it had to do with it uh, off Just on time. Call control. We should be picking up the canaries any time now. We'll continue to stand by. The uh, talking about teamwork. We uh, do have AOS acquisition of signal at canaries. Now. Every part of this uh, machine is monitored in the readouts of by computers and by telemetry. Uh, from the spacecraft and the engineers sitting there at their consoles in Houston uh, can almost fly that spacecraft themselves. With all their readouts, they can analyze a problem. Uh, uh, 10, uh, Houston, would you like for me to uh, review this uh, Ring 2 uh, heater check? I want you to do that. Hold things down in the air, Okay, uh, Tom, uh, we'd like for you to, uh, uh, we've got a seven-step procedure here, and I'll read it up to you. So, uh, panel 8, uh, CB, uh, CM heaters, uh, 2 main B, close. CM RCS logic on. CM RCS heaters on. I want you to heat ring 2 for 15 minutes, and you can select position C5 on the systems test and monitor the ox uh, line temp. Well, now they're getting a little bit technical uh, for us, and that sort of uh, technical talk will go on throughout this orbit. Uh, there are tracking stations. You heard them mention the Vanguard. It's a tracking ship out in the middle of the Atlantic to bridge that gap between uh, Bermuda and the Canary Islands, and they got some communication through that. Uh, but now it is the monitoring of all the functions. That's the purpose of these two orbits around the Earth. Be sure that everything is functioning in the spacecraft. They'll be reading out a whole set of figures which will be absolutely meaningless to us uh, laymen, and uh, getting reading back from the ground, confirming these figures, confirming that all instruments and all systems are working. Let's take another look at that magnificent launch, but this time on slow motion video tape. Sort of an instant replay. Now here for the first time, we discovered a little problem uh, from where we sit, and that's that, uh, that great cloud of uh, dust and smoke that comes up uh, with the wind in the southeast as we were getting it, uh, blocked off our view there for the climb past the uh, umbilical towers, the tower that carries all the life support system uh, into the spacecraft while it stands on the ground. This is a picture from that tower, which is uh, only about 60 feet away, uh, showing the, the, the rocket as it went by at the 320-foot level. And there the skirt of the Saturn 1C stage, and that, oh, not quite, I, I was mistaken. I thought we were at the, at the base of the spacecraft, uh, the rocket, we were not at that point. You still saw that USA go by and the uh, venting liquid oxygen. And this is seen from the base. This is one of the NASA cameras, which are right there and are protected against the blast and heat of the liftoff. Honestly, can't be sure that I can tell you what you're seeing right there. I can't make it out myself. It looks like the base of the rocket at liftoff, at, at, at ignition, uh, which it very well could be. We could have that seen out of sequence. There are the water jets at the pad, I'm told. Uh, they deluge this pad with over a million gallons of water pour across there in a very few minutes. Great jets of water uh, to dampen, of course, uh, the extreme heat from the launch and to put out any small fires that may have started on this uh, great dome of reinforced concrete, which is the launch pad. And there's a beautiful picture on that pillar of flame of that kerosene fuel with the liquid oxygen as the uh, furnishing the oxidizer. Seven and a half million pounds of thrust. 
coping thousands upon thousands of gallons of, uh, of uh, fuel every second. So it makes that first 11 seconds which the seven and a half million pound thrust first stage operates. And so the astronauts of Apollo 10 are well on their way for man's second voyage to the moon. They are just reaching their orbital height in their first orbit of the Earth, and in another three hours they will be, well, a little bit less than that now, two hours they'll be firing up for the uh, launch into uh, escape from Earth and their trip to the moon, which they will reach on Wednesday. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 10 will continue in a moment.